How hard is it to climb Kilimanjaro? More than 30,000 people come every year to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. We often hear that less than 50% of all climbers make it to the top, suggesting that climbing Kilimanjaro is a difficult achievement. But well, more recent statistics suggest that more and more people are reaching the summit every year. So, is it getting easier to climb Kilimanjaro? And if not, what explains the high success rates that we see on the mountain today? To understand the current dynamics, we should look at the history of climbing Kilimanjaro. Early explorers had a hard time trying to conquer the mountain. The first attempt to climb Kilimanjaro was made by a Prussian officer, Baron Karl Klaus von der Decken. In 1861, he made the attempt with a crew of 50 porters, but bad weather foiled his plans. He made it to only 8,200 feet. He tried again a year later and made it to 14,000 feet before turning back, this time due to heavy snow. Hungarian Count Samuel Telecki and Australian Lieutenant Ludwig von Hanel were a bit more successful in 1887. Telecki and his crew of 300 porters made it to 17,400 feet before stopping the expedition due to ear aches. The same year, German geology professor Hans Meyer reached the lower edge of the ice cap on Kibo, but was not equipped to traverse the ice on the upper slopes, so he turned back. Numerous others tried and failed to reach the coveted peak until 1889. That year, Hans Meyer made his third attempt at the summit with the assistance of Ludwig Preschaller, an Austrian mountaineer. They set up several camps, stocked with food and supplies to allow for multiple attempts without making a full retreat. Finally, the pair reached the summit of Kilimanjaro on October 6, 1889. So why did it take several trained, experienced explorers with the support of large mountain crews multiple times to reach the summit of Kilimanjaro? The answer is simple, snow and ice. In Meyer and Perscheller's day, there was a layer of ice over the top of the mountain, so thick that they had to spend quite a bit of time carving footholds in it just so they can proceed. These days, the ice has retreated, allowing for reliable routes to the different peaks of the three volcanic cones. One can climb to the top without ever stepping on snow, but while snow and ice no longer are significant obstacles in the ascent of Kilimanjaro, the more modern barrier is altitude sickness. Because the early explorers had to battle the grueling terrain, they were encumbered, making slow progress on their ascent. They spent many days gradually gaining altitude and thus were well acclimatized. Ironically, the relatively easy paths to the top have resulted in a different obstacle, altitude sickness. Altitude sickness is now the main reason for unsuccessful summits. Today's well-maintained routes can be done in as little as five days, which by the way we strongly discourage. The original route that Hans Meyer took for the first summit closely resembles the popular Morongo route. It was also the route that was first used to guide commercial expeditions. For a long time, Morongo was the only route available, but it's not a well-planned path, and contrary to belief, it's a difficult route because of this. Even today, Morongo only has a success rate of 27% when done over five days. And when the second route, Machame, was established, though it was an improvement, it still had a poor success rate of only 44% over six days. Kilimanjaro's reported overall success rate of 50% is a result of the past popularity of these two routes. However, clients nowadays are avoiding five and six day routes. The new routes on Kilimanjaro are designed to control the flow of visitors and have more reasonable elevation gains from day to day, thus reducing the likelihood of severe altitude sickness. The longer routes that are used today, like the eight day Lamosho and nine day Northern Circuit, have overall success rates of over 85%. More and more people are choosing these routes with the education of reputable operators who steer clients away from the five-day Morangu and six-day Machame routes. Therefore, the percentage of total climbers who reach the summit is increasing. I believe the 50% success rate for climbing Kilimanjaro is outdated. If I had to guess, I'd estimate it's closer to 70 to 75%. But it's not that the mountain has become easier in recent times, 
but rather that people are making better route decisions. This is a welcome trend on Kilimanjaro, as it's safer and more fulfilling for everyone involved. So how hard is it to climb Kilimanjaro? It depends on the route you choose. Chances are, if you climb on a longer route with a professional outfitter like Ultimate Kilimanjaro, you'll make it to the top. And unlike Hans Meyer, you'll do it in just one try. Visit ultimatekilimanjaro.com for more information on climbing Kilimanjaro and be sure to like and subscribe for more videos. I'll see you on the summit.